What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new video. Whether this is the first time that you're ever watching one of my videos or if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. My purpose behind this channel is to share my experiences as a new cyclist and hopefully that way I can motivate some of you guys to just get out and ride your bike, whether that's through fun riding with friends, uh, training videos like we're doing today, gravel races, road races, and hopefully just build a big community around it. If that is something that you think you want to be part of, if that is something that you think you will enjoy, then a like and a subscribe goes a long way to helping me achieve my goal. Today, not only I'm going to be taking you guys along for my two hour training ride, but I'm also going to be talking about, I'm going to be doing and talking about possibly my favorite workout and one that was part of every single build that I did last year. Um, towards my A races and not only helped me get from category five to category three on my first year racing, it also um, improved my power from less than two watts per kilo to just shy of 4.7 towards the end of the year. And, and most important than that, winning multiple races along the way with the biggest one being Florida State Road Race Championships, which is this beautiful jersey that you're seeing right here. Thank you to uh, my team Waldo for making this happen. It looks amazing as well as Mumo Apparel for uh, getting it done for us. And I also finished second uh, on my age category at Florida State Gravel Championships and third overall. So like I said, I love this workout and I'm gonna give you guys every single reason why I love this workout in this video. Let's go. Thanks. guys so uh, I just finished my warm-up I'm into my 30 minutes of zone two before I get into the actual intervals here in a second and uh, my warm-up is super simple 15 minutes the first five I like to do them at very easy zone one pace um, it's just to get the, the system moving then the second uh, five minutes I like to do them at middle zone two just just keep ramping up the heart rate a little bit um, just keep you know moving the legs and then the last five which to me are the most important um, I do them between 290 300 which is sweet spot for me and those really tell me a lot right then and there 15 minutes in um, there I'll know if I'm on a good day or not I'll know um, if the high rate climbed up like it's supposed to it also is really good for your mental because it, it just tells your brain all right we got to work hard wake up um, we got a hard workout coming up so it's just a source of gets you used to that effort that's coming up um, but let's talk about this uh, intervals that I've been gassing so much for a while and that is over unders I freaking love over unders guys and uh, if you guys don't know what over unders is I'll explain it here in real quick uh, the simplest way I can um, so over unders are intervals that make you work above your FTP or your lactate threshold and then under and um, the reason why they're so effective is because they teach your body how to use lactate as fuel how to buffer lactate um, how to shuttle lactate um, so when you work above your FTP you create more lactate and lactate is not bad a lot of people think lactate is bad but lactate is a fuel we just got to teach your body to be more efficient at using that fuel. So um, that's what these intervals do. That's what zone two does. That's why it's so, so important. And um, so the way they work is you work above FTP, you create a lot of lactate in your legs and, um, and then you slightly recover under your FTP, but it's not really recovery. You're still working pretty hard. So by not fully recovering at, let's say zone one, um, your body has to learn how to use all that lactate while still working at a pretty high intensity. And that's why they're so, so effective. And that's why they're so good. Well guys, let me get this, um, 
let me get this uh, sewn to done, get into my intervals. And this is not really the main reason why I love cover unders, but uh, I'll go over that with you guys here in a second. Let me just get this sewn to done. All right, guys. So as I get one of my over unders done here, I want to tell you guys the reason, the real reason why I love over unders so much, and that is because they're so much more race specific than a steady state interval, which is something very important, especially as you get closer to your A events. I feel that over unders really mimic, like a, for example, uh, like a pace line or, or a breakaway. It mimics the changes in pace so good. Let's say as you take your turn in the front, that will be the over portion. And as you rotate back, but still got to keep putting out that intense effort to stay on the wheels, that will be the under portion. And as you do that on and on for, I don't know, six minutes, eight minutes. Um, I feel like that's one of the main reasons why these are so, so good. And the second reason is that you have unlimited options when it comes to progressing over under intervals. And I'll explain here. So before last weekend, I hadn't done any type of uh, over under since October, which is before Florida State uh, Road Race Championships. So I started very easy, only six minutes long, two minutes under and then one minute over. Very simple. Remember, when training, one of the most important things is, uh, is progressive overload. Well, yeah, I say one of the most important things because there is a lot of um, other things. But um, so for today, I'm doing the same exact interval, same length. Um, so the same length uh, for the under, the same uh, length for the over. But I increase the power of the unders for, you know, around 10, 20 watts or so, or at least that was my plan, right? And, uh, and that's one of the many ways that you can slowly progress your over unders. For example, next week before a rest week, I'll switch it around and maybe make the under portion be one minute long, but then make the over be two minutes long at the same power, same interval duration. Or I can add uh, another set of intervals and make it eight minutes long or nine minutes, minutes long instead at the same power that I just did today. There's just so many ways to progress this, and that's another reason why I love it so, so much. But increasing FTP or power on the bike is a bit more complicated than just doing over-unders. And I'll explain here in a second. So, um, and I'll tell you another reason why I love these. And I didn't mention it before is the amazing adrenaline pump and motivation that you get when you nail all your sets of over-unders. It's just an incredible feeling. Like that alone is such a mental gain and such a like confidence uh, inspiring. And I'll tell you, that's a nice thing to have in your arsenal, arsenal because confidence will take you places that you just won't believe. Um, but as I was saying before, uh, improving your FTP or power on the bike takes a lot more than just a workout or many workouts. Improving the bike, um, improving the, the power on the bike, um, you have then to get to a new level that you've never been takes doing things that you've never done. And at the top of my list, it definitely has to be consistency. That is the number one tip I will give to anybody trying to improve, not just on cycling, but anything in life. Second is to pick the right volume that matches your lifestyle and schedule. Like you can go out and smash like 20 hour weeks. You can do as much training as possible if your time allows it. But if your body can absorb that training, you will burn out and move backwards instead. Um, second, and honestly, I'm saying second because these are not in no particular order. I'm just you know, throwing them out there. But second, you need to fuel your workouts. And this was a big thing for me last year. I wasn't doing this. And as soon as I started, the what I noticed in my training and just how I felt after, it was insane. So that's a whole nother topic on its own, to be honest. But it is very important. And I can't stress it enough, guys. Your body will not be able to perform at its best without fuel. You can't expect the Ferrari to run on water, right? Uh, and it's the right fuel for top performance. And not only during the session, but also after to provide your body everything it needs to make the proper adaptations. And there's so many more I could just go on and on. But I feel that if you get this right, you will be blown away with how much progress you can make. And guys, let, um, hear me out on this. I speak from self-experience. It's because I made the same mistake. And that's why I'm sharing this out with you guys. I just got to this uh, gas station here. I still had a... Uh, I just finished my workout, finished my two hours, thank God. There's this crazy storm rolling in right now. So uh, I'm at this gas station. Unfortunately, there was a couple more spots that I really wanted to get out and record for you guys. But um, it's not gonna be possible just because I don't wanna risk it. I got all my camera gear with me. I don't wanna get wet and, uh, and messed all this stuff up. So at least I was able to go up and down the road before the rain got here and finish my workout. 
and uh, Felicia should be on the way to pick me up. Unfortunately, I still had about another 45 minutes to an hour uh, zone two home. That was aside from the workout. That was something that I was adding up to it. But unfortunately, that's uh, that's not going to be possible. But I got another long ride tomorrow, three hours. Hopefully, the rain stays away tomorrow, and I can get out and uh, and get that done. But if guys, if there is something that I want you guys to take away from this video, I guess I'll talk to you guys a little bit before she gets here. Is that FTP is not the end all be all. Although it is very important because as you raise your FTP, I'm getting soaked right now. Um, as you raise your FTP, all your other zones go up with it. So it is very important. But the number one takeaway, um, and the one thing that I want you guys to take away from this is that training has to be very specific. And you'll hear every uh, big coach, every scientist, everybody will tell you that about training, not just for cycling, but for any type of training. Um, golly, pouring. Um, so uh, training needs to be very specific. So if you're training, let's say for a 40K TT or a hill climb, then yes, those really, those steady state efforts become really, really important. Now, if you're training for, um, if you're training for uh, long gravel races, then volume becomes really, really important. And being able to do uh, like threshold efforts, BO2 efforts after four, five, six hours of riding. Um, and then if you're doing crits, then those 30-30s, those 40-20s, 30-15s, all those really, really, uh, high intense, but also being able to repeat them time after time becomes really, really important. But with that out of the way, guys, I'm going to end the video. It is pouring. I'm going to wait for Felicia to come get me. And uh, I got my, my next race coming up, but my first race of the year is Swamp Classic, which I'm super, super excited about. So if that's something that you guys want to see, um, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell icon. It will be greatly appreciated. It will help me get this channel um, out there. And with that out of the way, guys, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.